Welcome back, everyone. Time for another episode of Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Offroad. I am your host, Doug Langford, alongside my outstanding co-host here, Mr. Caleb Forbes. What's up, what's and up? I'm going to lead right into talking a little bit about you today, Mr. Caleb, because you made a little bit of mention last week mm -hmm. on one of the episodes, might have been the mailbag, yeah. where you were heading to... Uh, at first, I thought you were in Denver, North Carolina, and then I realized <laughs> once we started talking, you were not talking about Denver, North Carolina, no. sir. You were going pretty epically, and I saw some pictures on Facebook, to Denver, Colorado for your bachelor party, yeah. <laughs> which is pretty freaking awesome, but I see, now by the, uh, I see now by the background, you are back safe and sound, which mm -hmm. is awesome. So what, what did you do? I saw some pictures, but like, what did you do? I mean, aside from the stuff you can't talk about because it was a bachelor party. <laughs> Like give me give me the highlights of stuff you actually can talk about because Brittany might see this episode. No, I can I can talk about the whole thing. It was actually a pretty relaxed thing for a, a bachelor sure party. Sure uh, no, flew in, um, went straight to the uh, Iron Mountain Hot Springs, um, so the natural hot springs in Glenwood Springs, California, nice. or not? I said California. Wow, uh, Colorado. Colorado. Um, so we actually had to take seventy all the way up into Vail Pass, mm -hmm. down the other side of the mountain. And we were actually kind of close to Grand Junction at that point, maybe an hour and a half away. Um, Did you go through Glendale Canyon? Did you have to go that far yeah, through the canyon? Yeah. Um, nice. Got to see uh, the oldest hotel in Colorado, so Hotel Colorado. We got to have lunch there, which is super cool. Um, it was built in the 1800s. Um, Hot Springs was awesome. Um, did, uh, did a little gambling at Black Hawk Casino, stayed there. And then explored downtown Dang. Denver for a little bit. Um, it was also Cinco de Mayo, so there was a lot of crazy stuff going on. Uh, overall, it was just an awesome, awesome trip. But there was a lot of road miles put through uh, I-70 and, and back roads on the mountains of Colorado, which leads me to the uh, what I wanted to talk about today on, on, on the episode. Um, I realized idea. we were passing, uh, man, we passed Holy Cross, Red Cone, um, I, Dude, you'd have passed all kinds of great. We trails. passed so many uh, Georgetown, oh, yeah. uh, Granella Pass. Like we passed so many of these places, and we pulled off at several stops to look at like some mountain lakes and um, and some just different really cool just stuff right off the road. And it really got me thinking. I was like, man, if I was wheeling out here, my wheeling setup and what I'd want to bring with me is very, very, very different than what I would want to have if I was, you know, say like you are in North Carolina. Or um, maybe Windrock would probably qualify for this because it's out there a little bit. But there are some of those towns, man, like you're talking 45 minutes to an hour until you hit the next big town. Um, oh, yeah. So pretty, pretty big that's drive. That's pretty typical for out west. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's pretty typical. Out there. So uh, I figured today we could talk about uh, the top five things that you would want to bring with you on a wheeling trip. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think because a lot of people, I have seen it so many times. I mean, you, I, I've gone on a couple of wheeling trips. Mm -hmm. Never have I ever, ever, ever seen where every rig was properly prepared. It's it's just never been a thing, um, except on events where, like, they say, okay, well, day one of the event is check-in, and we're going to go through your, your rig and make sure you've got your fire extinguisher, and you make sure we got your med kit, we make sure you got your all that stuff. Then, yeah, but you'd even be surprised then how many people are like, hey, you're missing this. you got to go into town and buy that and i'm like i feel like people should know this but then i'm like well maybe they don't maybe they don't maybe it's a lack of experience maybe it's something else so i think it's a great idea for an episode so yeah great idea without further ado then uh let's jump right into this yep let's do it when other people see dirt you see glory and when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. All righty. So as Caleb said, let's get right after it without further ado. So I think we do this. Uh, I think the first thing I have to do is I have to caveat this. 
there needs to be some things, and, and I'll give kind of a three things that should be in your rig no matter what. If it's if you're going, and I really think that, you know, aside from it being a daily driver, if you're going to off-road the vehicle at all, I don't care if it's a Bronco, a Tacoma, a Jeep Wrangler, a Gladiator, I don't care. I think there's three things that have to be in there that are not on this, hey, five things you may not have thought of that you need to bring with you list. Number one for me, in no particular order, you need to have a med kit in your vehicle at all times. Um, you know, I use H3R Performance. They're a sponsor on the race team. They've got great stuff. Um, they've got a partnership with My Medic. Uh, if you've ever heard of like the My Fac and all those, I say just go to My Medic, go to H3R Performance, H3RPerformance.com. If you don't have a med kit, just grab one. Um, you've got different color options, you've got different level of options, but just get a freaking med kit because there's going to be stuff on there from I got a really bad headache to. You know, I had at one time I was keeping, you know, like a sucking chest wound kit in my, in my rig. I don't, I don't do that anymore, <laughs> but I would keep enough in there to like, if somebody had a broken bone and you yeah. need to set it a bone and you need to have a splint, like you just don't know, like you just don't know, especially when you get out in the back country. So some level of med kit to your ability, if you're not able to, if you don't know how to operate a tourniquet, then don't bring a tourniquet. Like if you don't know how to make a splint, don't bring a splint, but bring enough to your level of knowledge something is better than nothing. So I would say that number two for me, is just tools like bring tools specific to your rig to fix the most likely stuff. Like bring something you can change a tire, you know, bring something, you know, just, just basic stuff. Even if it's just a tool bag with some craftsman stuff you buy down at Lowe's or some Milwaukee stuff. Like I don't bring a ton of tools with me um, when I wheel, but I bring enough to where to get me through, you know, I don't, I'm not bringing enough stuff to rebuild the whole Jeep but I know what the most typical things are. So I bring stuff that's specific to that vehicle. Now that doesn't help me if I'm bringing stuff for my Wrangler and you're a forerunner. So if you're the guy in the forerunner, bring stuff that's specific to your forerunner, right? Like bring stuff that's going to be able to, you know, bring enough sockets to fix your steering. You know, if you break a tire on, bring enough stuff, you know, bring that kind of stuff. So tools for me, uh, and then some kind of communications device. Um, and now when I say communications device, Yes, on a radio. Um, I am a UHF VHF guy. I understand that GMRS is a thing. So just make sure that you're bringing comms that everybody else in your group is going to be able to use. I kind of think CB is dying, so I don't really ever recommend yeah, CB. I agree. I, I know that a lot of recreational wheelers are in the GMRS camp right now. Um, I've heard some guys say ham. Ain't nobody freaking using ham radio, guys. Stop. Be quiet. Sit down. Um, I mean, ham, there's a there's a place for it. It's not in my Jeep. Um so, excuse me, I think dual band or GMRS is going to be the way to go there. But I also, if you're going to go out in the backcountry, I like the idea of like that Garmin, um, the little Garmin spot things, the, mm -hmm. little, the little messaging devices. Yeah, those are so awesome. Like this big. Yeah. Something so that if something happens, you're doing a recovery and you get knocked out or you, I don't know, something that somebody can find you um, because there's so many stories out there of people. Of, oh, if they only would have this. If only would have done that. If only, if, if only ever, if only then this. So something like that. I think you got to have that at a minimum, you know, a radio, obviously, but I like the idea if you're going out in the back country, uh, especially extended remote type stuff, low group count numbers, you know, you're only going out with two or three rigs, the lower the group count, the more comms. I know that seems counterintuitive, but the less people there are, the more likely that you're going to need, uh, comms gear and you're not going to have 20 rigs with you to get you out right. right so i would say that so that's my three med medical comms and tools so above those three um i think is our list of hey maybe you didn't think about this but uh you should probably bring that you should probably bring these five things so i started off with that so give me go ahead and give me your first Go ahead and give me your first two. Yeah. Well, no, no. Like, gotta have yeah. them. Uh, and I want to preface that note too. I agree. I'm kind of changing my list a little bit based on what you just said. Um, but no, those were yeah. top three things that, like, yeah, you should definitely have no matter what. Um, gotcha. uh, but I think the next two things on my list are things that are probably, it's not top of the list, especially if you just think you're going out for a day trip. Um, but now, having seen how remote some of those trails in Colorado are, that I want to go wheel now. Um, here are, are two things that I definitely will be bringing with me. Um, the first being trail snacks, food, water, and maybe a jacket. Um, it was very, um, man, the weather changed so quickly up there. Uh, 
we were we were driving and it started at 70 degrees in denver and by the time we got to vale pass there's snow everywhere um mm-hmm. and that evening it actually started snowing pretty heavily um at uh in blackhawk and so yeah i was like wow um i don't have a jacket with me <laughs> uh, so i bought a hoodie but um yeah, I mean, that's just one of those things I was like, uh, I could see keeping something like this in the, in the Jeep with me if I wheel up here. Um, but trail snacks, food and water. Um, that's something that I don't think I've, I've really heavily thought about, especially for like what I consider a day trip if I'm not camping. Um, but if things go wrong, you, you're probably going to need some food out there um, or walk a very, very, very long distance up a mountain, which you don't want to do. Um, so those are two things we'll start with or one thing we'll start with actually um and then the next thing i kind of considered was maybe a pair of hiking boots and extra pair of socks um or just some kind of comfortable very comfortable all weather all condition footwear so your first two is basically i actually had both of those things on my list um i worded them slightly different but i kind of numbered mine one through five Mm -hmm. and you just labeled you just took my number one (laughs) which is food and water yeah like food and water you've got like that's essential like even if you're going out you know we've got you made mention of uari which is a small small system it's not even 20 miles of trails you could probably walk from one side to the other in a couple hours like it's not a huge thing but if you get in a recovery situation um and you're out there for a couple extra hours and you start getting hungry your blood sugar drops you start making bad decisions your 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 um your cognitive abilities are reduced you start making decisions that's when people can get hurt so i would always always you know it's like when i go camping i always pack enough for 10 percent more than what i need or 10 to 20 percent more than i need so i'm going camping for five days i'm bringing food and water for seven if i'm going for seven i'm bringing food and water for 10. if i'm going for two i'm going to bring for three so 10 to 20 percent extra over what i've got because you you just don't know and it's good to have that extra stuff because in a survival situation, you could even you could take those extra couple of days and ration it out and even maybe double what you got. But you're not you're not taking a bad recovery offering situation and turning it into something life threatening because you didn't properly prepare. So definitely food and water um, were one thing for me. And that can be in a cooler that can be, you know, just bringing snacks, bringing food, bringing jerky and make sure it's actually stuff that's going to fuel your body. Don't bring five bags of Skittles and a couple of Pepsis and some beer. Like, that's not what we mean by food and water. We're talking some of the most popular things I see. Beef jerky is a big one. That's a huge one. Or deer jerky, elk jerky, whatever. Some kind of protein. Um, I am a big one with the bars. I like kind bars. I like cliff bars, the RX bars. Those tend to pack a lot of nutrition and a lot of caloric value um, into a small package. Um, One that people might not think of that you can actually still buy these. And I used to do this. I don't anymore for camping is military MREs. Lots and lots and lots of calories. Everything is individually wrapped in there. So you could take the pack of crackers out and not touch anything out. You could take the entree out and not touch anything else. Um, there's a couple things in there to make them kind of taste good. So if you want to throw and and honestly, an MREs, they they keep for a very, very long time. So you could take yourself two or three MREs, throw them in the back of your vehicle, and they're good for a couple of years. Like that's something you don't have to think about. It's kind of like these these supply companies that sell you 25 year food and you just put it in your basement if you're a prepper kind of the same thing but mres last for a very very long time and i can tell you mres over the last 20 years have have advanced beyond what they were in the 90s and they're actually not terrible compared to what they were i mean compared to going to a restaurant yeah okay they're not great um so yeah food and water my number one definitely was your number one and then you hit my number four which i had rain gear slash prep you know weather appropriate uh weather appropriate clothing know where you're going before you go if you're going to you know you say colorado i think I, I, the first thing that comes to mind is holy cross and wheeler lake especially wheeler lake you start low and you end high well what happens when you go high the temperature drops because the pressure changes you you don't know you know i've been in it sunny and i come around a turn and i go into this bank and it's sunny and and 72 and then i go around and i go up and now it's rainy cloudy and 55. you know that makes a difference and again it's the same thing with food. Over time, that lack of food and water is going to impair your judgment, impair your cognitive ability, impair your physical ability. Weather is going to do the same thing, more so dropping into colder weather than dropping into hot weather, um, but still the same thing. So, you know, pack an extra rain jacket, pack a base layer, you know, pack, know what you're doing and plan for it. 
so that you can know, okay, well, the weather channel says that this is going to be 55 up there. Okay, we'll assume 50. You know, I, I, I go for that 10 to 20% rule no matter what. It works. So <laughs> pack enough food, pack enough water for 10 to 20% more than the time you're going to be out there. Pack, you know, more clothing for 10 to 20% colder or 10 to 20% hotter than you think it's going to be. If the weather says it's going to be 90 in Moab, assume it's going to be 100. Like, we all know, we've all heard weather guy jokes, right? Like, the weather guy is the only, only profession in the world you can be wrong 50% of the time and still keep your job. Like, this stuff is real. And, again, you know, we joke about it here because we're in our nice, you know, climate-controlled offices and studios. But you get out there in the world, and the world doesn't care. Like, nature doesn't care. That is the one thing left on this planet. It doesn't care about your feelings. It doesn't care what you want to do. It doesn't care about your having or lack of experience. It just is. Nature is what nature is. And there is nothing that we as little tiny ants of human beings can do to change it. And the only way, you, the only thing you can do is prepare for it and try to work with it. Because if you try to work against it, we're going to lose every single time. Yeah, so, so I'm definitely with you on food, water. Uh, and I'm definitely with you on rain gear slash weather appropriate clothing. Um, you took my number one and my number four. So. <laughs> and to tie into your weather appropriate clothing, I think I want to throw a little, another little caveat in there. Um, just because I experienced this and I did couldn't believe uh, on a 49 to 50 degree day, lots of cloud cover. I still got sunburned at elevation. So uh, who are you talking to? Yeah, you, you super this? white people. Course, I know. Sunscreen all I the know. Time. It's a white people problem. That's, yeah, yeah. But um, if you are fair skinned or if you're prone to sunburn um, and you're going anywhere in elevation, grab some sunscreen and bring that with you because uh, that can make your day very uncomfortable as well. Now, everybody out there with like brunette and like nice tan skin. <laughs> those idiots. <laughs> everyone's got, I don't everyone's got brown crap. eyes and like nice tan skin. And here I am, blonde hey, hair, white skin and blue eyes. And I'm like, I can't see. <laughs> all those normal people out there. Like that's $20 I don't have to spend. Exactly. Ha, ha, ha. exactly. But for all of us vampires <laughs> and soulless genders out there, take your sunscreen, throw your yeah. can of the spray spray sh- 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 stuff in your center console yeah. and be happy. All right. So what? All right. So that's two. We got three left. What's your next one? Um, yeah, so I hit two. of Do you want to go with two more, or did I hit two of yours? No, just give me one more. Now we're in the. Now we're in the. Now we're only in we're three in left. Three. So I just wanted to knock two off the top. Okay. Uh, at my number three spot, um, I'm going to say a um, spare tire or a spare tire repair kit. I feel you don't. You don't clap that in tools. Um, no, not necessarily. I mean, it's worth noting separately. It's, I'll give you yeah. that. Yeah, uh, for me, I feel like it, it falls in separate because. I, and, and especially in the past, have not ran with a spare tire. I always do run with a spare tire repair kit. Yeah, ditto. Um, mm-hmm. So for me, I feel like that's a little bit separate. Um, both are equally important. Okay. Um, if you don't want to take the weight of having a full spare tire on your rig, then definitely have a tire repair kit. Because, again, my mind was just thinking, if things go wrong way out here, like, what am I going to do to fix this? Um, and again, it was, you're probably going to wait most of the day. If you're luckily, if you're on the side of the highway, you'll wait a little Makes while. Uh, oh, I get it. For, you definitely need something tire. You got to have it. Like for me, I put it in with tools, but I can definitely see giving it its own thing. Cause that's probably the most typical trail issue. Yeah. Some, a, a flat. That, yeah. That's, that's that. Yeah, for sure. And we just hit on it talking about, you know, the number one tool, bring something to fix a, fix a flat. So I can get with that. In your vein of, hey, you're way out there and thinking about things that could go wrong, uh, my next thing on my list was a, uh, again, survival is, and a lot of this comes from me being, first I was, a, before I was ever an offer, I was a backpacker. Um, you know, I've done the Grand Canyon, I've done Canyon Lands, I've done many, many miles of the Appalachian Trail. Um, I've done some of the Pacific, uh, the P, now I'm drawing a blank, the Pacific Coast Trail. Thank you. Um, up in the Washington and Oregon area. I haven't hit any of it in California, but I definitely want to. You know, I've done some stuff in Canada. So that's where this comes from. But water treatment device, a life straw, a MSR, like a like a, a water pump that filters water. And I understand that a lot of off-roaders may not know what that is. But I can tell you that, you know, if you're out in the backcountry and your vehicle breaks down and you find yourself in need of hoofing it back to the nearest thing of civilization, and you are, you know, you don't think in a vehicle that 75 miles is a long time. It's not. In a vehicle, that's no big deal. 
you know, but now you get now think about my vehicles broke down. Maybe you didn't have comms or your comms won't reach. And I've got to now get back to civilization. 75 miles, even at a good hiking pace, is going to take you five, four to five days. It just is. It just is. At an average walking pace of three miles an hour, if you're going to do, you know, even through hikers are running, I think they're running like 20, 25 miles a day, something like that. And you're not, most off-roaders are not Appalachian Trail through hikers. Um, it's going to be a several day, maybe it's three if you're high speed, maybe it's six if you're not, I don't know. But your body can last without food for a couple of weeks. You ain't going to make it that long without water. You have to have water. And when your water supply runs out, death is not far behind. And you don't want to be, you know, you know, I don't want to be in a situation where, oh, if only I had water. Like, I could have, you can keep walking. Like, you can put one foot in front of the other. Um, but you can't do it without water. So, water, water treatment device. I like the ones. I run an MSR, my backpacking setup. Uh, I used to run the MSR Sweet Water. They don't make it anymore. They made something else. But any of the ones that pump. And then if you really just want to keep something super uh, emergency would be a Life Straw. Life Straw is just really, really easy. You can grab a couple of them. You throw them in a bag. You throw them in your center console. And then you're covered. You're taken care of. And you don't have to worry about having water because that's that's super, super, super important. So my next one on my list, my number two was water treatment or filtration device. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I didn't even think about that. Honestly, I was thinking food and bring water. But yeah, no, you're exactly right. It's a right. backpacker thing. Yeah, no, yeah, that's a uh, that's good experience to come off of. because That's not something I think I or most off-roading people would consider is, is something like that. Um, well, it's cheap. It's probably yeah. one of the cheapest things on this list. I mean, you can get several hundred dollar ones that are. You know, when you start talking about weight and, you know, how much water you're pumping during the day, mm-hmm. like when you go backpacking, we don't take water with us. Yeah. We only take these devices with yeah, us. You gotta so we weight. tend to use the bigger devices that can give us, um, you know, we, we look at how many gallons can it pump or how many gallon, how many minutes does it take to go through a gallon? Because you're running, you know, ideally in high, you know, I guess high usage, body usage situations, you're going through, um, you know, right around plus or minus a gallon of water a day. Um, but in a survival situation, you can look at stuff like life straw is one, you know, that's, that's kind of the one I would recommend for off-road people. If you got to go, Oh crap, I got to take a 30 mile hike back to home, you know? Yeah. Life straw. Um, and you know, get you some water in you. So, yep. That's my next one. It's a good one. Solid one. Um, moving up to the top of my list. Um, I know you mentioned tools and we mentioned spare tires, but, um, spare commonly broken parts uh so u-joints for drive shafts and axle shafts um i'm trying to blank here um just anything that the most common trail breaks i would have a, an extra spare or two on hand u-joints are cheap enough to have a couple in a tool bag um because a broken u-joint could end your day um and leave you pretty stranded okay i actually did not put spare parts on which you think i would because i do the race car thing <laughs> But I've never really brought – the reason I haven't is just because of a weight and a size thing. Like, I don't really – I'm not going to throw it – you know, because when I think, I think U-joints, but I'm thinking – you make a better point. I would think drive shaft, but U-joints would be more likely to break than a drive shaft. That makes sense. A, maybe a tie rod end versus an entire tie rod. So yeah. that makes sense. I can small get with parts. that. The smaller the small, pieces. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I could get with that. I yeah. could get with I that. I mean, we can, we can do um, a trail fix for a tie rod. Um one way or another, but if the tie rod end is snapped, you have nothing to, to really go off of. Um, yeah, that's fair. So that's fair. I like that's that. kind of was my thought process was how many drive shafts have I broken? Zero. How many drive shaft U joints have I broken? A couple. <laughs> uh, What's funny is your list is definitely tending towards the take care of the vehicle side of things. Mm-hmm. And mine is take care of the person <laughs> side of things, <laughs> but it's, it's making it for that's, a good, that's solid why there's two yeah, of us, exactly. right? That's, that's why there's, that's why we're on either side of this. How, so how boring would this uh, podcast my next be one if we have the exact same both. thing for the entire list? <laughs> I mean, we kind of started out the same, but yeah. now we're diverging and now I'm going to diverge more. Cause my next one, um, even though it's got the name, the word tool in it, it is not a tool in the, in the traditional sense of the word. And that is an e-tool. Um, if anybody in the military knows what I'm talking about with an e-tool, e being entrenching. And and these have now moved on to where they include more things. If you've ever seen, it's about a foot and a half to two feet long generally, and it's got a handle, and it looks like a folded up shovel. That's what it looks like. But the blade of the shovel has multiple different types of surfaces. 
One side, there's a, one side's pointy for striking at things. One side's flat. Some of them now have blades on them. Some of them have serrated edges on them. Some of them have things that now flip off of the, of the handle. Um, some of them have hammers in the end, but it's basically a giant multi-tool um, that it, it, in its basic, in the military function, it was an entrenching tool that could, um, number one, you could dig, you can dig entrenching lines. You could trench yourself in. You the, the primary purpose was you dig a hole and you cover yourself. You get in that hole. Um, they did this in World War One. They did this in World War Two. You get in the hole. You make yourself low. You make yourself below ground level. You're harder to hit by enemy fire. And then you can cover yourself up. And that was kind of the only way you could get any sleep. You you could you basically dig a foxhole. So you know Google that entrenching tool foxhole. That's where this comes from. Now they've modified. They've you know, time and you know modernity have taken hold. So it's definitely more now and now there's companies out there that actually make like overlanding and off-road style e-tools that were specifically made for that. And they've got a couple things on them. You can use the shovel to um, bury things that if you have to, you know, you end up staying somewhere for a while, you can bury things you don't want animals to get to. You can use a shovel to help self-recover. A lot of, can, lot of situations where you can dig out in front of a tire, put some rock in there, put some wood in there, get some traction. Um, if you don't have, you know, max tracks or something like that, you can do that. Um, you can use that. You can use it to strike things. You can build shelter if you need. You know, I've seen guys build shelter with an e-tool. You know, there's there's some of that serrated edge. You can start hacking on some wood. You can start building stuff, and you can kind of camp in for a while. If you if you find yourself in a survival situation, that e-tool can come in handy in a lot of different ways. And generally, they come the ones that really fold up come in a come in a bag that folds up, and it's nine inches square, eight, nine inches square. So you're not talking about using a lot of space in your vehicle. They only weigh a few pounds, four, three to five pounds, depending on what's on there. The old, the old style ones the military had were, were, they were bigger. They didn't fold up as much and they were heavier, but the modern, more modern ones are going to be lighter. They're going to fold up more. So they're not going to take a ton of space in your vehicle and they're not going to take, uh, add a bunch of weight. So that type of entrenching tool, I would say that was actually on mine as number three. So awesome. after, after water treatment device. Gotcha. Well, let's hear your, uh, your number two then or your second. Uh, second the, so the the, I guess we're, I've got, it's actually, is that one more thing on the list? It's only, we've only got one more thing, right? Um, yeah. I've only got I've already one more. done my food and water. Yeah. I've already done my, yeah. One I've more only thing. Got one more so thing, my last so. thing, now we get, now we get away from the survival situation. Cause I wanted to do, I didn't want to get so serious because when you're in a bad situation, it's serious, but we've all been in situations where something is broke and we're sitting on the side of the trail and there's really nothing else we can do. Somebody's working on it. There's 15 people there. Three people are working on the vehicle. There's really nothing you can do. What do you do? You sit there on a log. You're in nature. There's only so much looking around in nature and, oh, how pretty. There's only so much of that you can do before you're like, holy crap, I want to get out of here. <laughs> like This guy did not come prepared. Yeah. I've done all I can do. So. The fifth thing on my list, least important, right? But at least for your mentality, something for downtime. So make you know, bringing a game that you can play outside. I've seen guys bring RC cars. I've seen guys bring, you know, a, a, a cornhole, you know, the mini cornhole board or something that kind of folds out and you can do, you know, lawn darts or something like that. You know, a camping chair, something like that. Because, you, you know, you'd be surprised how many times you get out there. I've been out in the desert several times and all you want to do is just sit down. And how much how much it means to you to just be able to slap out a folding camping chair and just sit there and chill, like especially if you have power. Like I could sit on my phone and screw around on my phone in a camping chair for hours. Oh yeah. On stuff yeah. that's you know, and something that doesn't require the, you know, the Wi Fi or something. So I would say, you know, I had it listed here as games slash fun things slash chair. Just something to kill the time because as much as we want to think we're gonna be driving the whole time, it just doesn't always end up that way. So you might as well plan for it. I, you know, you hope for the best and plan for the worst, right? Like that's that's the saying. That's the mantra that everybody should kind of uh, adopt. I've had that mantra for years. But, you know, you hope for the best. You hope for a good time. You hope for no breaks. You hope for no downtime. You hope for all that stuff. But you prepare for the worst. You, that's, you know, if you're not preparing for the worst, you don't bring a life straw and an e-tool. Okay? Yeah. So, <laughs> um, Very true. Or, or spare you joints, right? So I think, you know, bring something to pass the time for your mentality, just mental. Even if we get into that extreme, the other end, you know, those things could be, could be key, 
very, very crucial things in survival situations to just have that little thing of fun for your mentality, uh, for your mental well-being, just as much as you would have bring stuff for your Jeep's well-being, for your physical well-being, the food, the water, all that kind of stuff, taking care of your mental well-being too, especially in a survival situation. So I would just say, you know, fun stuff, time killer stuff. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with that. Um, so my number one, we'll get to here in a second, but now that we've gone through this list, I think I have a couple honorable mentions that we should, uh, talk about too. So we'll get into that. But my number one, uh, was actually a fire extinguisher. I know this is, should be on everyone's rig to begin with. Um, but I've seen so many, so many Jeeps and other vehicles. It that, better be on every, let's just make that, a, let's just make let's that make a requirement. A like take a freaking fire extinguisher guys go, right now. Just go to h3rperformance.com. Look at the max out. They've got one. You don't need the Halotron. Don't you don't have to spend Halon money. Mm-hmm. Look at their max out. Um, the it's A, B, and C. It doesn't make a mess. Like, like just get a freaking fire extinguisher. Yeah. Like those are so small. How you many can, times have we seen several. rigs burn to the freaking mm-hmm. ground? Because not only did the person that was there didn't have a fire extinguisher, all the idiots around him didn't have it. Yeah. And I know that you know using the term idiots a bit strong, but if you don't have a fire extinguisher in your rig and don't know how to use it, yeah, you're an idiot. Yeah, like, um, and that was you're my, gonna burn a sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollar vehicle to the right. ground because you weren't prepared. Yeah, I mean, and you think about this: like vehicles have gotten so much more expensive in the last couple of years, and p- the parts have gotten more expensive. So why would you not want to protect that? Uh, and you you nailed something else. Well, and why did they get so expensive? Right. What, what's one of the main reasons? Electronics. Yeah. More electronics, man. But you said something in in your your wording that hit the nail on the head too. Know how to use it. If you have never right. used a H3R fire extinguisher or an element fire extinguisher or even your own regular fire extinguisher, for the love of God, guys, like go put a fire in the backyard or somewhere safe and buy an extra f- budget for this and know how to use your gear efficiently. Um, even I worked at the sheriff's office years ago and part of our training was fire extinguisher training. And I was actually really surprised to know how many grown adults had no clue how to work a fire, a normal everyday fire extinguisher. Or even where to point it. Yes, or even where to they point just it. just going out here all yeah. the way and mm-hmm. the base of the fire is down there and you're like, bro, it's not going to work. Doing? It's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work. And so, and the same thing applies in the off-road world. If if you're, if you pull the pin on a fire, in a regular standard fire extinguisher, you're not pointing at the base and you're just kind of reaching in and, and hoping you get yeah, it. Yeah, you like, just totally wasted it. Yeah, that you're wasting it. Um, and <laughs> you totally killed it. I've seen some videos, and I don't want to hate on Element Fire Extinguishers, but um, Ultra 4 did ban those specific ones um, because they're a little bit difficult to use, and they didn't have a high success rate. But when used correctly, they typically work. Um, and I'm, I'm sure that's the same with any major piece of equipment, honestly. But, um, yeah, have a couple fire extinguishers in your rig. That should just be a normal thing for every day. Um, there was a... We should do a video on, on this too and just kind of demo how these things work. I was just thinking that. Uh, I think safety. that would be maybe a, a maybe instead of a mailbag Friday, but like a tech tech like Friday. Um, because there was a video at um, Jeep Beach this year of a, a we'll beach. Do a whole, of a we'll Jeep do, we'll do a whole episode on yeah. it. Yeah. Let's just do a whole episode Absolutely. on it. But there was a video at Jeep Beach with a JK, I want to say, that was burning down on the beach. Um, so, like, it can happen anywhere. Um, it can happen on the highway. You don't have to. We should to be go off-road. mobile. I'm down let's for go that. mobile. Yeah, let's, let's do it. We should grab the things on this list because I have all of this stuff. Like I have, I have that uh, that Overland E tool. I have a couple water treatment devices. I can grab that on my 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 kit. Um, we can grab. I've got the. Um, I can't. It's connected to the car. I have that little comms device. But we can get some stuff and kind of show it because you know a med kit. A med kit doesn't do you any good if you don't know what's in it. Open it up. Look at it. Right. Um, a fire extinguisher doesn't do you any good if you don't know how to use it. An e-tool doesn't do you good if you don't know how to use it, don't know what it's capable of. And then, you know, water filtration, you can, you can know what it does, but if you don't know how to make it do what it does, it's totally useless to you. Right. So I think I say we do that in the next month or so. We just go mobile. Absolutely. We get and together, perfect we do, timing for, for camping episode. season coming up too. That, that, and we start, that oh, awesome. absolutely. This is when it needs to be done. So we can actually put physical descriptions mm-hmm. and, Hey, this is what this is. This is what we're talking about open up the, you know, open it up, take a look at it. I think we can do that. I think we should definitely do that. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's super important. So let's Thanks. hear your, uh, your number one or your, you already had it. Okay. So you've got all five. I didn't have any honorable. I didn't really have any honorable mentions because gotcha. the things that I was thinking about honorable mention, I said, you know what? These should just be, um, 
this should just be there. And and fire extinguisher is that would that would absolutely be mine because I kind of I guess I kind of just assumed again you know what assuming does I guess I just kind of assumed that everybody has it, but I've seen enough videos on social media to know that not everybody has it. Just like you just referenced that Jeep beach video. Maybe we'll get some, we'll get some footage of that up. I mean, it just, there's nobody around. And I'm like, this could have been so easily fixed by having a, by having one that was rated to put out electrical. Like it's just that easy. You know, I, I know they're a little bit more expensive, but the Halotron ones from H3R performance there's no, there's none of that, that dust. You can literally take, we have a Halotron one in between uh, us in the race car. And when you pull it out, you can literally take the nozzle and put it in behind the dash and just, shh, there's no dust. There's none of that crap that you got to clean up. It, Halon just robs the fire immediately of any oxygen. So it doesn't matter if it's electrical or not. Uh, the only thing it's not rated for, I think is like ground fires. I don't think it, it's not ready to put out like brush fires and like leaves and stuff. Right, but that this 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 fire extinguisher specifically for me and Rob in the race car, and those are ninety nine times out of one hundred going to be electrical. We do have the max outs behind us, one on each uh, vertical going down the diagonal pipes going down off the B pillar in the race car that are rated for that. So we are covered a hundred percent. We're required to be covered, obviously, right? Um, but we should want to be covered, yeah, absolutely, as well. So I think, uh, yeah, fire extinguisher is a big one. Yeah. So, and I think all of these. Uh, I think um, now, just kind of glancing over our, both of our lists, um, this doesn't just apply if you're going in backcountry Colorado. Like, this could apply for beach trips, um, for just normal wheeling, and some of these things are nice to have just in your everyday pouch, just in case you know things go wrong. Um, my my honorary list though i kind of wanted to to talk to you you've mentioned a couple things that sparked some ideas in my head um thinking more on the survival side um if you i mean most people don't have a whole lot of room for a full tent um or know how to set up a tent rather um in their their rig but um hammocks are super easy and hammock will get you off the ground Okay, Overlander. So, uh, now you're trying to make everybody an <laughs> off-road Overlander. No, 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 no. I didn't say rooftop tent. Look, everybody, don't let Caleb bully you into being an a, a, an unassuming Overlander when you didn't even know it. <laughs> That's when we made a new Instagram handle, unassuming Overlander. Oh, Lord. <laughs> no, Calm but down, I mean, a, uh, a hammock is awesome. I've slept in a hammock before. They're comfortable. They're small. They pack in. They're super light. Um, so I think... I actually keep... I bought like four of them. I put hammocks... But not for what you would think. I put them in my camper mm-hmm. so that we go to campsites and whatever, usually in the woods, right? So mm-hmm. we, we take them out and we put them in the trees, like in the mm-hmm. woods, and we use them as seats. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we'll build campfires in the middle. Yeah. Like, I don't sleep at I don't, I used to, like, I still have it. I used to hammock camp a lot. I had, like, the custom hammock, mm-hmm. the underquilt. I had the little burrito wrap. I had the bug net. I had all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's super awesome. It is. I do it, love hammock They're comfortable. Camping. I do love hammock And they're camping. super versatile. Like you said, you can make it a seat. You can make it a bed. Like, yeah. it, and just, it gets you off the ground, and sometimes that's it that's does. nice. And they're really awesome. Like, it, the ones I have in the camper were, like, the $20 Walmart yeah. specials. Like, you, you don't need, need an you don't, Eno. No, or you don't need to spend $100 like on that. They're all made the same way, yeah. right? You can throw that in there. It wraps up to, like, the size of a fist, man. It's crazy. Um, and they're super lightweight, and they're fun. Like, you can go out, strap them between two trees. In two minutes, you're set up. And again, learn how to set one up, take it out, use it, get in your yard, learn how to set it up quickly and efficiently. Then they're just fun. You put them out in the tree, yeah. you sit down in it, and you're just kind of rocking back and yeah, forth. And you, you, it is so relaxing. Is. And you don't it's even so have nice. to buy the um, the web straps. I mean, they're nice, but you can use um, a couple couple sections of uh, like 550 paracord um, to, to tie them Damn up. Damn it, you got me to agree with you on a freaking <laughs> hammock and an off-road rig. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, that maybe some par- paracord is always nice to have anyways. Um, and then you mentioned having something to keep your mind occupied, um, which brought me down. I was like, okay, well, what happens when my phone dies? Well, all right, great. So either take the chance on using your vehicle to power your phone, um, which might die or grab, you know, a couple extra battery packs. Um, you can get those super cheap now too. Amazon has a ton of them. Um, just portable battery battery packs and that you can usually charge your phone up a couple times on one of those packs. Well, I'll tell you one thing I have. It, it's not on the list because it's not really it, – this is kind of into bougie world, but I do have it. I've kept it for years. I have the um, the Goal Zero notebook charger. 
Um, it is about the size of a folded up iPad. And it's got a little mesh pocket on there that I put my little whatever charging cable I'm going to use. And it's got a little, I don't know, it's 15 or 20 watts. It's not much, but you don't need much. Um, and it, you unzip it and it folds up and it folds out into these two, uh, like I said, it'd be like, it'd be like two iPad minis just kind of opening up and it's a, it's a, in there and you can put a, um, I take one of those juice packs, like the little Mophie juice packs and I'll put it in there. So the solar is always charging something and it charges that Mophie and you can take the Mophie out and plug your phone up to it or something like that. So if I go out, I go out with that. Cause again, all the stuff on this list None of this stuff, I mean, tools would be the heavy thing, but you need tools anyway. None of the little stuff we're talking about takes up a lot of space. None of the stuff we're talking about takes up weight. You, you know, a water treatment device is ounces, not pounds. An e-tool nowadays is four or five pounds. You know, some games, some fun stuff, a little camping chair. You can get super small ones at REI that weigh nothing and, and don't take up a lot of space. Right. Um, comms device weighs nothing. I mean, it's this, it's nothing. You know, a med kit weighs two pounds. I mean, it, it's not big stuff. Yeah, truthfully, you could do. So I've got a um, a backpack, and I I cannot remember who made this. I bought it at a um, an off road event in um, in Arizona years ago. Um, but it's got um, Molly panels, Molly stitching all over the back of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it was called the thirty six hour bag. It, it was designed to be able to pack everything efficiently that you could need to survive. Five eleven. No, it's not 5'11", but it's very, very, very not, I know they rank theirs by how many. Um, this one was, like, and I'm sure it was taken from the name from 5'11", but it was just some guy selling his old stuff. Um, DDT or D, DTD or something like that. I don't remember. It's been years. The the stitching is uh, It is. I think it is DDT. I um, remember that company. Yep. But So I've got their bag, and I've literally had this yep. bag since 2019, and I love it. It goes, it, it, I brought it to Colorado with me. It goes everywhere, but everything we're talking about can fit in this bag very comfortably. And yep. so literally all you got to do is much. just grab your one bag, make sure everything's charged, toss it in the back of the Jeep and you have what you need. Um, yeah. I mean, except my tools, which yeah. are specific to their own bags yeah. and boxes. I've got a tool roll. For all that. that other stuff I have goes in one of the OG. They're, they're better now. They've made new ones. Now one of the OG factor 55 bags when they first came out with the bags. Cause I used to have the backpack. Um, I had a five eleven backpack. Um, and it all went in a 511. You just toss it in the back. Um, but that was a backpack. and it, eh. So now I use that Factor 55 bag. But it's just one bag. Again, besides tools. Uh, and it just all goes in there. Like, I figure if I can fit weeks of stuff in a backpack and go into the Grand Canyon and Canyonlands and Utah and all that, I can certainly fit a couple days worth of stuff in a, for a wheeling trip in, in a backpack like you or just some bag. So, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not super. It's not like you're spending a ton of money to get it done. It's not like you're spending um, a lot of space. You're not giving up a lot of weight. It's not like we're telling you to go grab 400 pounds of crap and go be a real overlander. Um, that's not what we're saying. These are small things that can make a huge difference. And if you're going to do it right, this is what you should want to do anyway. And we've all been guilty of not doing it. I've been guilty many times of going out to the local off-road park and not doing this. Right? 100%. 100% see both mentalities. But and and that's less important there for sure. But I think if you're going to do it, just do it every time. I think that's probably the best way to do it. If you're going to buy this stuff and you're going to kit it up and you're going to have it to where, you know, I've got it all in one thing, one bag, one pack, one whatever, then just take just throw it in there every time you go out. If it's to the beach, whatever. I mean, maybe maybe not all of that stuff matters. Like, okay, I, there's no reason I'm going to need a life straw and MREs at the beach wheeling or probably you are. But I've already got it, yeah. so why not just throw better it? Have in? it, not need it. Then like need it's it, all not have better it. to have it, know it's there, um, and exactly better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And again, since we're not talking about a lot of weight and a lot of size here, this isn't stuff that's going to be like, oh man, I can't take pastors with me today because I brought all the stuff Doug and Caleb told me to bring. No, that's not what <laughs> this is. That's not what this is. Right. That's not what this is. This is this is relatively lightweight relatively small footprint stuff that can all, like you said, go in a bag. Um, and I think that's just a smart thing that we should all do. It's just go prepared. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's what Warren says. Yeah. That's their, that's, that's their, their logo, right? Um, Sergio and Brad will be so proud of me. Warren, go prepared. So everybody, <laughs> my, everybody be like Warren, be like go Warren. prepared. Um, and, I, and one thing neither of us touched on. And now that I'm thinking about it, um, probably deserves another honorary mention, some kind of fire starting device. Um, just in case. 
Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Um, uh, not, not the, the most important, but you know, thinking about the survival aspect, um, there've been plenty of times that I have had to light a fighter. Um, I don't smoke, so I don't keep lighters and stuff with I me. I think you should just um, learn how to, I think we should all learn how to light a fire without cheaters. Yeah, absolutely. I think we, everybody should learn how to, you know, even cause if you got paracord and a stick, you're lighting a fire. You it, really, or, or even something, even something, um, I could, I could see doing it with certain things that are in your vehicle already that you could cannibalize off your vehicle to make the bow set up. I like that. That's my kind of favorite with the, with the bow and the string. Um, so if you've got that, I, you know, you need water and food. I could probably survive without a fire, but that's kind of like that. Um, I guess that's kind of like the games and stuff. It's not really required, but it would be nice. That's on the, it would be, it would make life a little easier. Cause I get that even though I have a desire for everybody to have survival skills, I am also smart enough to know that 95% of people don't have any, Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> nor do they possess the time, <laughs> effort, energy, or desire to do correct. so. So I, I, get, um, I get it. My last honorable mention is some kind of good flashlight. Um, again, this is something that I feel like almost everyone has already anyways. Um, just some kind of good flashlight to keep with you. Um, I think I have a headlamp, headlamp, headlamp flash, flash some kind so of lighting yeah, device, that, yeah. kind of light. even if yeah. that means using the flashlight on your phone, um, just something so you can see where you're going, especially at night. If you're, if you're locked down, yeah, it's good. Um, I like that because the if you remember on the trip to um, Utah for the Mighty Five that we did, um, there was one uh, one campsite I had to wake up in the middle of the night and use the bathroom, and I didn't bring the light with me. I didn't think about it, and I made it maybe twenty feet out into the woods, and then stepped in a huge hole, and I thought I about broke my ankle. Um, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, the moonlight's pretty bright tonight. I can see everything. I'm fine." Stepped right in it. <laughs> yeah, I can see that one. That, so, one's, that one's pretty good. That one's pretty good because I've used. I mean, nowadays, most people are like, you know, when I do get up, whether I'm backpacking, camping, whatever, I will usually just use that, the LED on my phone nowadays, which is good for that. And I'm kind of surprised you didn't just bring your phone, man. Like that was Utah. It was a couple of years ago. I know. You had your phone. I, I, Bro. In the middle of the night, I wasn't Fail. thinking about it. I was actually, Fail. I used my phone less on that trip than anything. I mean, we were out in the middle of nowhere, but still. We didn't um, have any signal. No. Um, <laughs> I, I use it as like just. I did have a headlamp on that trip. Yeah, no, you, I did have you a headlamp. Were fully on that kitted trip, out on that and trip, and I would take it with me. Oh, I was, and that went into the rooftop tent with me every night because I knew, like, I'm not young. Like, it's totally normal for me to have to get up in the middle of the night, and be like, God, damn crap, I got to go to the bathroom, <laughs> climb my happy ass out of the rooftop right. tent, go down, go to the bathroom, and get back up in there. And those were not warm nights. It always seems like I have to go the worst in the coldest because there was a couple nights. That second night we were up at elevation. That one night where we passed the 9,000 foot elevation sign as we were pulling into the camp, the, the camp area that was, was like, yeah, it's going to be freaking gonna cold. Be cold tonight. It's so cold, but it was so nice during the day. I mean, it really was like the desert type thing. It was like 70, 75 during the day. It was really nice. And then at night, it seemed like every night I know we were in the thirties almost every day, except the last night in Moab. I think we were in thirties the first night at, um, yeah, that big open area because we had people had ice, but it was so beautiful during the day. The second night we were at elevation. So we got that was that one. We were kind of on that that spine mm -hmm. overlooking the lake. That was that cool. was that was a really cool I've got campsite. some great pictures from um, that trip. You actually posted a picture a couple of days ago <laughs> on one of the yesterday, one of the on oh, Earth yeah. Day. It was on Earth Day. Mm -hmm. It was a couple weeks ago. And I can't remember what store it was on. But the wife's like, hey, wasn't that your Tacoma? I was like, yeah, she's like, well. Is that the guy still has it looking like that? I was like, no, no, that was a picture that I took with the trash bag on it. So I'd make sure I got to throw away all my trash. That was that campsite. Such a good campsite. That was an all, but it was windy as crap. But I remember that campsite because we all kind of got our chairs up around the back. We built that fire like right on the cliff edge. Mm -hmm. And everybody was just hanging out on the cliff edge on the fire oh, that, that was night. So cool. That was, that was a great. And then the next, and then the other one that was cold was that one where we went up 9,000 feet and came right back down. In that, in that aspen tree forest that was a cold night you know, i think like the only ones we didn't have cold were that one where we found the camp like in the middle of the rock wall we were shielded from everything yeah the gob that, goblin that valley Brolander was, van yeah yes goblin valley was the pretty Brolander van tried to come in and camp next to yeah. us yeah goblin valley was left. cool that was super comfortable but in moab sun yeah. valley we didn't it wasn't that cold no, uh -uh. i know the but wind was windy. kicking up pretty hard but holy the first, crap that night was windy the first three nights were Ugh. 
cold, cold, cold. Yeah. Uh, I would not it's, mind yeah. actually. In, you talked about going out to the field with this stuff. I would not mind a doing some videos to show everyone how to use all this stuff, but b like doing a little dirt to dust overland experience and maybe Ooh. redoing the mighty five do and doing it the way we want to yep. do it uh, and fully plan that out. Um, I think that'd be which is cool, cool because doing that, there was a lot of times that you know we had a schedule, we had to get places right. But there was a lot of times like, oh, man, we should have gone this way. Or, oh, we should have gone this way. Or, oh, we could have gone more off road if we went this way. And I made a lot of those notes on my because I kept that. I, I basically logged that whole trip on my Gaia. And I made some little notes of, man, it really would have been nice to go through here because there was that one trail we didn't get to take. The guy at the gas station said, oh, you should go this way. We didn't we didn't we didn't do it because we didn't know if we were going to make it. We really also didn't know what it was going to take. You know, we had a fairly stock forerunner. We had that that JL with the the overland we didn't know what that was going to throw at us. So I would really like to research some of that and do that again sometime. That'd be pretty cool just to go do it and invite some people along. Yeah, absolutely. I like that. That's a good idea. Go back and recreate it. Mm -hmm. That was good stuff. All right. Well, I think we, we definitely got our list done and we even went off on a little, a little tangent back on memory lane. I like it, but Hey, it filled out the episode. Absolutely. <laughs> well, look, I, you texted me this morning. You're like, Hey, let's do this. I'm like, I don't know if it's an episode. Maybe if we get into it, you're like, Oh, we can definitely we can get into it. Episode. That's all right. Look at this. <laughs> look at this. We made it a full episode. We made Absolutely. It a full episode. All right. Man, that was a good one. I hope that, I hope some people, that was more of an educational one. Probably yeah. than an and one or for those, like those listening, watching, um, leave us a comment, drop us a line. I know on Spotify, I, do your I list. typically try to, um, Include some kind of interactive question at the bottom of uh, Spotify. You can scroll down and um, put your input in there for it. Uh, YouTube, yeah, you, your can, list in there. you can put definitely list in there. comment. Uh, give us your list. Give us your your must-haves or your honorary mentions. Or tell us if we were right or wrong. Either way, uh, we would love to hear from you. Uh, yeah, that was my that's my plug. <laughs> Yeah, that was yeah, that was good. I like it. So yeah, definitely comment it up. Um, give us your list. You know, again, remembering the things that we said were half dues, you know, that we just think everybody should have. Maybe you got an idea, some cool stuff. Um, drop a picture, show what yours looks like. Maybe we'll do, but I do think, I do think that's a thing. We'll get, we'll go mobile, get out of the studio and do something. Um, maybe safety. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, but I like that idea. So we'll do that. So that everyone is where we are going to leave it for today. As always, we do appreciate you coming in, listening, watching, stopping by, spending a little bit of your day with us, wherever you may be, whatever you may be doing, and whenever and wherever you may be watching or listening from. Uh, we thank you, as always. Don't, do not, don't, do not, don't, do not, <laughs> contractions. Man. Don't you never, don't you forget, make sure, y'all, everybody hit that like, comment, subscribe button, hit that little bell, make sure you know when we're dropping new episodes. We do drop those every Wednesday at different times based on the platform, but we are available everywhere. You get your podcast, YouTube, YouTube podcast. Spotify, Apple, all those places every Wednesday. And then we drop our special episodes. Usually is our mailbag on Friday, so you can catch us there. A little shorter episodes where we kind of interact with you, get your questions, get your comments, and talk directly to those and with you guys. Uh, but Caleb, that is it, man. Um, great episode as always. Look forward to seeing what you got for us next week, especially with Friday on the mailbag. We'll talk more about getting uh the going mobile getting out there in the real world episode going but until then and until the next episode thank you guys for stopping in and we'll catch you on the next episode you've been listening to the dirt to dust presented by outlaw off-road the premier off-road centers for jeeps trucks and suvs sounds a little bit arrogant doesn't it oh well we hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.